Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Frostbite Tribe. In the last episode, we finally made it over to the mountains thanks to the strong guidance of Anna Ismi, though we have not exactly had the warmest of welcomes on this brand new island. We certainly didn't expect it to be as calm and carefree as the grasslands that we were at before, but the leeches, the leeches in particular have been the biggest nuisance. We even have one of these notifications over here because poor little Coco way over on this side of the island has probably received the worst of it all throughout the entire episode she does have one of the leeches on her right now so somebody's going to need to come over here and take care of that when we have some more energy but she also of course caught the attention of this wandering male this very first rogue male that we've run into and now one of our very first potential dangers they unfortunately did have a similar immunity gene in their genetics so that means that this baby now runs the risk of being very very sick so Coco is going to have to try to find some secluded place to set up a nest and have her baby because she doesn't want to risk getting the rest of the tribe sick too. The sicknesses can now spread, so if a creature is sitting next to one of the sick babies, then they will also catch the common cold. And that's going to be very hard on our mothers in particular because we don't want them leaving the side of the babies just in case those birds pop up in our skies. But if they do stay right next to them, then they're going to get sick too. So this is all purely hypothetical of course because right now there is a possibility that we could also receive maybe immunity gene e i mean it's not guaranteed to be sick there is a possibility but it's not guaranteed just yet so fingers crossed that this baby will end up being very lucky instead but otherwise coco is going to have some very hard decisions to make for her baby so since everybody is all tired out now why don't we go ahead and skip the day so we can get started on that and of course so we can investigate this very very strange ice rock in the background that is probably the thing that i am most excited about but let's make sure first that nothing is popping out at us of course we have the leech issue over here we have a bunny up here too which i think we will definitely want to catch and let's also sniff around just to make sure that nothing else has kind of crept out of the darkness while we weren't paying attention we have a lot of bunnies over here i wonder if that means there's some more berry bushes for us to pick from maybe but first let's go ahead and a jump on this bunny we'll have kirnuta go ahead and grab up this one and i see you making a beeline down the shore. We're going to have to put a stop to that. In fact, Roku should be able to finally take this guy out because he only has three days left on his life, so why don't you go ahead and slap this guy one last time for us. There we go. Because of course, if he gets to our other females, then we're going to be in the same situation. It looks like some of the children have grown over here, though, so Faith can actually grab her second gem. That means she can wander a little bit further away from her mother since she should be safe from any potential birds in our skies. And I believe little Tundra can grab her very first gem, her blue gem, because she is a very, very strong warrior. So she is going to stick right by the side of her big brother. I think he's going to be a very, very protective big brother too. He's going to make sure that she is safe at all times. We'll go ahead and pick up some of the grass around here. We can pick up our berries and um, some of the lingering patches of grass around him as well, just for that extra material and just to make sure that nothing can spawn in these areas. Now, why don't we actually have Faith um, scoot her way way up here and I'm sure her mother is going to follow her. I was actually thinking that maybe they could make their way to um, the stream because Cloud does have the fishing tail so she might be interested in seeing if there's anything in the water that she could possibly grab for food. Let's have her scoot right over to the water side and kind of just gaze inside the stream see if she can find anything over here. So far I don't see any fish in the water so I'm hoping that something is going to spawn in here but I'm not positive if it will. If they can't find anything though then she might also take her daughter toward one of the trees, one of the other trees that our creatures haven't set up by yet, because she would be able to actually help collect the acorns with her cracker jaw. So she still, of course, has things that she can do for the tribe, even though she has some very unfortunate genetics. She didn't even inherit that special gene from her father, Kirkir, -Kir, and she instead inherited his infertile trait. So I don't want to see that popping up on more of our creatures, which means that she's probably not going to be one of the um, babies that we breed in the future. But for now, let's have Kirkir to go ahead and grab up the bunny meat that he caught and then I think strawberry is going to make her way over to this rock this very very suspicious rock it's a pretty good thing that um the creatures with the ram horns ended up finding it instead because I don't think they would really understand what to do with this rock anyway I mean it doesn't smell special there's no special sounds coming from it so maybe instead the goddess of war is kind of just gently putting the idea in their minds that 
that they should maybe crack this open. So I'm sure a lot of you already know what we're going to find inside here or what we could possibly find, what little treasures could possibly be inside this ice rock. Basically, there is a creature entombed inside this ice with some very, very special ancient genetics. I believe there are six different genes that you could possibly find from these rocks, but I only know of two of them myself, so I am very excited to see how this is going to shape the future of our tribe. Why don't we have Strawberry go ahead and do the honors? She can break this creature free. Oh my gosh, we have the little elephant trunk, don't we? And really, her name is Meme? Oh my goodness, this is definitely a sign from Animeme. I don't think we can argue that. She has a special immunity gene K2 and the digging paw. So the digging trunk, that's what this is technically called, though it looks like a little elephant trunk. How adorable are you? You have the cutest little blue eyes too. Oh my gosh. So this is going to help us very, very much if we want to try to find some roots on the mountainside. Why don't we see if we can actually find her any roots to dig up because I have a feeling that she is very hungry. Look, Look at that strawberry. You are actually sitting right on a root. So let's see how she can um, dig this up. I wonder if she would get any bonuses to um, the digging ability because look at that, a plus three in digging. She also has a plus three in smelling too. Is that better than the big nose? No, that is the same as the big nose. They both have a plus three in smelling. That is quite interesting. So again, you are going to be very helpful for us, but let's go ahead and dig up this root right here. Yeah, it does give us extra. So typically when we um, dug up roots with the creatures with the digging paw, we would only get one root apiece. We saw that from Kirkir Kir actually right before we left. So Meme, you are going to be able to feast on all of the roots on the mountainside. We have one way over here too that we'll have to um, go collect as well. And in fact, I think she would want to scoot her way down the mountain to um, go find all of those tasty, tasty roots because she must be so hungry after spending so much time in that giant rock of ice. How adorable is she? I can't get over that. Let's see if we can find her um, little model inside the family tree too. Oh my gosh. She is just the cutest little thing. She even has a velvet paw as well, so she's a little bit quieter than some of the other creatures on the mountain. Maybe that means she'll be able to evade some of the uh, predators as we're wandering around trying to collect all of her tasty roots. She only has a medium body though, which means she's not going to be able to protect herself as well from the cold. So we might want to settle her by some of these hot springs so she can be nice and toasty warm, or at the very least, within a nice large group of our creatures. And I think pretty soon she will wander down to meet our tribe because of course they're going to be very interested in this strange creature. Let's have Strawberry go right next to her so that she can keep her company. I feel like these two would probably be pretty good friends after all since she did just um, save her from the ice. And Rosette, why don't you actually scoot right up here so you can um, grab some more of these berries and pick up some of this grass for us. And I think I saw a bunny over here. Yeah, right over here. But we want um, Roku to actually come over here to take off the leech because poor little Coco has already been injured enough. She needs to find a place to settle down and start her family. So let's have her move um, right into the grass over here maybe. Oh my goodness, maybe not. We have a little berry bush over here. I mean, I guess this is an okay okay place to plop down a nest. We could have her move um, right here instead so she's right next to the berry bush and not too close to the bunny burrow. So go ahead and drop your nest down right there and that little bunny is very, very interested in what you're doing. Maybe it'll be a friend for your baby, who knows? Now Dandelion is the only one left with energy and I have a feeling he's thinking that he did not sign up for this. He did not sign up for all of these leeches, all of these wandering males. So I think what he's going to do is make his way back down the shore and um, hello little bunny. You are very interested in this nest, aren't you? Very, very interested. He's going to make his way down the shore though, and he is going to maybe try to swap places with his brother. He'll see if Leo would be interested in um, maybe going down there and helping out all of these tribe mates because I feel like he would just prefer to stay right in the middle of their main camp with all of their babies, with all of their plants, and just enjoy his time picking berries for his tribe. So let's zoom out and skip the day because I do of course want to make sure that Meme is very, very safe. 
we don't want anything happening to her. Thankfully, um, she does have quite a bit of life left on her, so she should be able to have many, many babies and hopefully pass that lovely digging trunk along to some of them, or at the very least, keep it within their genetics so we can pull it out later. Now, did we receive a different gene? Oh, the yellow eyes. So I think that means that this baby probably has the yellow eyes. Oh my goodness, look at you. Look at you, little one. So unfortunately, he does have the crippled paw, but I figured that would probably be the case. He has the medium tail and the big body, so that means that he's going to be very, very resistant to the cold, which is a very good thing for us to have. And look at that, he's actually not sick. Oh, that's perfect. He has immunity gene E. So this means that he might be a little bit more beneficial to our tribe than we were thinking. So Coco, you must be breathing a sigh of relief right now because your baby is actually not sick. He has a very unfortunate spit snout, of course, and he does have the crippled paw, but at least he's not sick. So he's going to be able to help out your tribe. And I think we also want somebody to grab that bunny too. I'm not sure if Roku is going to be able to make his way around there. Oh, it looks like he might. If he jumps over here, he can grab this bunny. And did I just here again? Did I really just hear another rogue male? I think I did. Oh no, not you now, Rosette. Where on earth is the male this time? Let's sniff around. Let's listen. Oh no. This one looks even more unfortunate because I'm pretty sure I can see those little frog toes on him. Oh, Rosette. Oh my goodness. So we got rid of one and then another one immediately spawned. And now we're going to have to like trap him in between maybe Kirnuta and um, Dandelion. Like I know you were coming down here to just enjoy your quiet life, but we're going to have to have somebody get rid of this male before he gets into the rest of our tribe. I am really shocked by all of the visitors that we've had here lately. I mean, we don't usually have this much trouble with the wandering males. He has the hemophilia, but he also has two completely new immunity genes. So I mean, I guess that's a good thing. That's a silver lining because again, those are brand new genes that we can introduce to our tribe. Of course, that means that we're going to have to deal with yet again those crippled paws, but those um, can be be easy enough to breed out as long as we make use of um, our mutation menu, which I did forget to do last time. So let's go ahead and place the running leg right in the 30% slot so we don't forget about that. And um, let's see, should we maybe place... We actually don't have to worry about the um, eyes. He has the normal eyes, thankfully, because she has the blindness in her genetics, so that would have been a little bit of an issue. So let's have Dandelion go ahead and take off a little bit of the health on this guy. You're going right over here, really right into our tribe. I mean, I guess you can hit him again if that's the case and then Kirnuta could actually come over here and um, try to hit him again if he gets a little bit too close. Thankfully we don't have anybody to worry about on this side but I certainly don't want him getting to our brand new little creature meme up here or even strawberry or cloud. This is the area where we don't want him traveling so Kirnuta is going to have to be on high guard. In fact let's have Squall start leading his little sister up the mountainside so that they can um, make it a little bit closer to all of these other creatures and lead them safely down to um, the grasslands but I guess this means that we can go ahead and get rid of this guy now. Yeah, there's just too many of those um, nasty genes in there. Those frog toes, the crippled paws. I don't want every single one of our females having his babies just to get those special immunity genes. Rosette is at least in a um, better position than her half-sister was because she doesn't have to worry about possibly um, having a sick baby. So she could just come over here and have her baby in this nest because nobody is going to be concerned about the common cold. <laughs> oh my gosh, how adorable the squall looked too with his little little claws sticking out of the hot springs. I guess Tundra, when she takes on her second gem, can toddle up after him, maybe come over to him on this side. I still don't see any of those fish in the water though, so they must not be available for us to um, fish up just yet. So instead, I suppose Cloud would kind of lead her daughter around the other side of the mountain. A perfect opportunity for them to um, go hunting too, actually. Oh my gosh, all of these bunnies. Let's have Cloud jump on this one way over here. Did it just eat these clovers? I think the bunny may have eaten the clovers. That's very interesting. I don't think we can interact with these, but if the um, clovers are actually attracting the bunnies, then that means that we know where to um, look to possibly hunt them down. We could um, come to these places with all of these different clovers around, kind of like the berry bushes. Actually a much safer way for us to hunt the bunnies um, rather than using our berries as bait, because we certainly don't want them picking up all of our food. And we didn't name this baby either. I think we'll name him Rascal. 
maybe as a nod to his very mischievous father, who of course he looks so much like. And then since Roku is right here protecting the baby, and he still does have two days left in his lifespan, we could have um, Coco scoot down here to pick up the bunny meat, and then come right back up here so she'll be able to pick up the berries pretty soon too. Now they are very, very secluded over here now that Dandelion has made his way back home to plead with his brother to take his place. So Leo, strong Leo, will do just that. He can loop around his brother and start making his way down the shore yet again to um, hopefully give these guys some backup at the very least. Now again, I'm hoping that his stinky tail is going to be able to deter some of the predators from hopefully munching on our creatures. So maybe um, him going down there will be enough to make sure that Rascal at the very least is kept safe. Though I'm not sure, Dandelion, honestly, if this is going to be any better for you because we did just have that other wandering male charge into our territory. So you are not going to have the peaceful life that you hoped for, but I don't think anyone can really expect to have a peaceful life on the mountains. Now, Meme, it might be time for you to um, make your way down here right after you pick up some of those roots. I know that's what you wanted to do before, so we'll move her right here so she's closer to um, our tribe, and then we'll have her go ahead and dig up some of those tasty, tasty roots that she loves so much. Strawberry, of course, can go ahead and follow her, and they can use this nice lit path that everyone has made for them to um, go right back to the territory so she can meet all of these creatures, all of these very strange creatures. I know she looks strange to us, but I feel like she would find us much more strange since when she was was um, kind of encased in that ice. She probably only knew creatures who look just like her with those big trunks. Now we have all of these ram horns, we have these big bodies and these claws. She must think we are the strangest pack of creatures that she has ever seen in her life. We'll have um, maybe Strawberry come down here though so she can pick up more of this grass on the next turn. And then we might actually be out of energy now, so we'll go ahead and skip the day and see if maybe Rosette has any more luck keeping um, the crippled paw off of her baby. Babies. I don't think that's going to be the case though. It looks like, yeah, we do have a crippled paw, but she has the nimble fingers and she also has the fishing tail. So if we could only find those fish, then maybe she could um, grab some of the fish in the water and the shells too. These tiny little adorable shells that we have sitting in the water. She kind of looks like a naked mole rat too, doesn't she? With that particular fur color, she looks like she doesn't actually have any fur at all. That is very, very peculiar. Well, I am sure Rosa is is going to love you anyway. And we don't have the birds in our skies yet, do we? I haven't heard them spawn, so surprisingly, we are very, very safe on the mountainside right now, except for those wandering males. And in fact, that is exactly what I'm going to sniff around for. Oh, it looks like we have a Dodomingo back here. That's interesting. We haven't seen a Dodomingo in a very long time, and it must be trying to steal this nest that we made. I mean, I guess, honestly, we could um, just go ahead and swipe it up. So no more nest for you, little guy. I'm sure you're very, very disappointed, but we can use that extra material for a different nest on a different part of the island. Now, since this is Roku's very last day, he would probably want to lead them away from their secluded little um, area over here. She was only in this position because she wanted to make sure that her baby was going to be um, nice and healthy. So now that they know that he is, they can start moving back down the shore and take up their position right underneath this tree again like they were hoping to. Unfortunately, we have lost um, oh my gosh, not again! Oh, wait a second, you're not a wandering male, are you? You're actually somebody who wants to join. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I thought we had a third one to deal with today, but you are much more friendly. He does have the crippled paw though, so I wonder if that means that maybe he was actually the offspring of one of those wandering males. Maybe he was born on this mountainside somewhere and that's why his attention was kind of drawn toward our pack, but he is much more friendly than they were. So we'll go ahead and um, invite him to the tribe. We might as well, we'll offer our food so that he can join us and um, hopefully, hopefully that means that he'll be able to to um, pass along those gorgeous ram horns of his. So little Kirvan, as your very first contribution to the tribe, why don't you go ahead and pick up some of these berries for us so Leo can keep making his way down the shore. We want him to get over to um, these little pack mates as soon as possible so that they're not alone, especially now that Roku is going to be passing away. So we're not going to hit the Dodomingo because we don't want to attract the attention of any other predators. And I mean, since so much is crawling out of the woodwork here, let's just go ahead and sniff around again just to make sure that there's nothing else. We just have some bunnies around in the distance. Um, we have some meat to pick up 
here too. We do definitely need to pick up this meat so we don't forget about that. And then I suppose we'll have um, Faith go ahead and make her way toward this tree just like her mother wanted her to. Her mother could actually clear out a little bit of this grass. We even have bunnies all the way out here. And then Faith could set herself up right on top of these acorns. Now Meme, our ancient Meme, should finally be able to make her way down the mountainside to meet all of her new tribe mates and uh, maybe their unofficial leader as well. I guess Squall would be the one most likely to get looked up to by his tribe mates just by default because he's one of their strongest pack mates and he is the oldest in the litter to um, Anna Ismi. Though I feel like he would probably end up um, sharing a lot of the burden with his little sister. They are going to be very, very close after all. Though she might do a, a little bit of exploring of her own at this point. She's probably quite curious about what might be over the mountainside so maybe we could have Kiernu to follow her just so she's not alone. We do want them to travel as closely together as possible and then we could have Strawberry follow them too for that matter. They're both um, hunters so they move a little bit faster than um, our warriors in particular. So they should be able to make sure that she's safe and that she's not alone since she doesn't have her final gem yet. And then Squall can stay behind to get to know their brand new pack mate. I feel like he would be a little bit smitten with her. I mean, how can you not be with those gorgeous blue eyes? Maybe she's not what he um, expected to find in a mate though. I feel like his mother in particular would be a little bit surprised because she doesn't exactly have the highest attack strength. She only has a one in fact, and that's only because of her medium body. So she is definitely not what is expected of this line, but I feel like maybe they will just try to start a little family of their own. Let's see, she has um, normal fertility basically, a very normal fertility stat, so there is a possibility that there might be a couple of um, failed breedings here. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Um, it seems like it did right off the bat. We don't have any notifications on the side of the screen this time, so let's go ahead and drop her right in the nest. She can stay right there. I don't think there's any roots in the area for her to gather, so most likely once um, they start growing their own little family, they might want to make their way up into the mountains and see if they can find any more of her tasty roots. It seems pretty clear to me that she would follow her nose no matter where she goes. She would want to make sure that she can settle down wherever her roots are. But I think that might be just about all of the turns that we can make. We could just have Squall kind of um, go ahead and pick up some of this grass in the area to make sure that nothing is going to jump out at us. And we want to make sure that Rosette is right next to her baby so she can stay right there. And that should be just about it. So let's zoom out a little bit to make sure that nothing else is going to spawn on us, of course. And poor Roku also passed away. And there is the bird. There is the bird in our skies. Very, very interesting. Okay. So it has apparently heard the callings of our very first ancient babies. And oh my gosh, how adorable is this little guy? He's at a very, very awkward angle. So we're going to have to go into um, the family tree to get a closer look at him. He must be Rovanu. He looks like a little bat. He is so cute. Oh my gosh, he has those poison fangs. He has one of the digging claws too, so that's good to see. And he did also at least um, carry the digging trunk in his genetics, so there is a possibility that we could pull that out later. The only problem with these ancient genetics is that we can't actually access them in the mutation menu. So we're going to have to try our best to gradually pull them out again in our family lines. This guy is just the cutest little baby though. Maybe not the most suited to the snowy mountain biome because of course, once it does start to snow, he is going to stick out like a sore thumb just like his mother, but he is still the most adorable adorable baby I have seen in a very, very long time. So what do you think we should name um, their babies? Should we go along with the snowy theme, just like um, Squall and Tundra? Or should we maybe give them a different name to um, go along with Meme's peculiar genetics? Let me know if you guys have any ideas because I would like to um, name him in the next episode, I think. And of course, in the next episode, we'll also have to make sure that um, we're going to be able to keep this family safe. Now that we have this bird hovering in our skies, we definitely want to make sure that there are no dangers lurking around here that will completely shatter them. So maybe we should have Leo scoot his way up the shore before we leave and just make sure too that nothing is in the area that we have to be aware of. Just a whole bunch of bunnies munching on their clovers and that's always good to see. So let's scoot Leo right down here so we can not only protect um, all of these creatures, Coco and her baby, but he can also pick up some of these acorns too to make sure that we have enough food. So let me know if you guys have any ideas as far as what we should name our ancient meme line, all of our ancient little babies. But for now, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys.